Call the meeting to order. Uh, introduction of late items. CAO, do we have any late items tonight? No, not tonight. Thank you. Approval of agenda, the recommended resolution that the agenda for the regular meeting of council for May 18th, 2021 be approved. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move. Second? I'll second, I'll second that. Discussion? Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Minutes of previous meeting. Recommendation that the minutes for the regular council meeting that was held on May 4th, 2021 be adopted. Do I have a motion, please? <clears throat> second? Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Also that the minutes from the committee meeting of the whole, pardon me, committee of the whole meeting that was held on May 11th, 2021 be adopted. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move it. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Yeah. Discussion? Opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none, motion carried. At this point, we're going to go into petitions and delegations, and I'm going to turn the meeting over to Deputy Mayor Tom Tinsley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe we're just waiting for the arrival of uh, Amit Lal. Uh, I wonder, uh, Mr. Chair, if we should um, amend the um, agenda until he arrives, uh, because we, we don't see any sign of him even trying to sign on, do we? He saw it in the lobby, and okay. I haven't got an email. Um, right. Um, so I I would agree with that. Um, do we need a motion to to move this to the uh, the person's arrival? If you want to make that motion, uh, Tom, I will back that motion. Okay. Oh, there oh, he is. is. Good. Here he is. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is he though? Yeah. Oh, good. Hello, Mr. Lau. Mr. Lau, can you hear us? I wonder if he's on mute. Hmm. This is the sign for talk. No. Oh. <laughs> looks like you're a duck. Yeah. Is there another way to communicate with us? Yes, I think I have a cell phone here, uh, okay. Deputy Chair. I'm going to see if I can give him a call quickly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he thinks we're running behind schedule. <laughs> well, he may not realize that he's. He may. He may not know he's muted. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. Can, can you guys hear me? Ah, uh, now yes. we can. Thank you. No, yeah, no, we were just can. asking. Thank you. Yeah, you've unmuted. That's great. We all experienced that. No problem. Thank you for joining us. I'm the Deputy Mayor Tom Tinsley, and yeah. I'm. Uh, we're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Um, so I actually, uh, as you all know, that I'm. Uh, we we bought the uh, uh, 714 Sewood Road property a couple of years ago. I think a year and a half ago, and uh, since then we had uh, COVID hit us. Strong. Our plans was to uh, reopen the facility, but uh, because of this, we had to kind of change our plans. And uh, now our plan has changed not to open the hotel, but to uh, do something else with the hotel. And uh, the uh, the plans that we have come up with is either to uh, to build a uh, timeshare holiday complex um, that. That is in the works with my partner, and uh, also we last week um, there's another idea popped up was uh, to to work with the the BC housing and and to build up a 50 plus complex. 
So those are the two plans um, that we have in the pipes right now. The major concern that we have is right now we don't have any uh, income coming from this uh, location, but we have expenses going out. And our major expense is uh, is the uh, the the uh, city tax that we are paying utilities and and water. Um, and that's why we have kind of appealed uh, to the council to look into this somehow that we'd be able to subsidize it just uh, for the period uh, until the COVID is over. We have up, we have uh, looked into uh, government subsidies, but because the uh, business was not running when we bought it, we uh, cannot apply for these uh, subsidies from the government. So that's where we are standing right now as of today. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. Uh, do any of the uh, councillors have any questions that they would like to ask Mr. Lyle? Yes. Uh, Councillor Paulson? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, and thank you for coming forward tonight to speak with us. I'm, I'm wondering what your plans were, your timeline was to open the, uh, or reopen the hotel after you bought it a year and a half ago. So when I bought it, that the, uh, at the auction, the, uh, it was in March. So we thought that uh, the covert will be, uh, will be done with within a month or, or so. So mm -hmm. we were hoping that by May or June, everything will be over and uh, we'll be back in back in uh, normal phase. But as time went by, I thought maybe by December it would be over and uh, it did not. It just kept on going on and on. And still today, like uh, we've been trying to be optimistic and say, hey, uh, hopefully by June, July, um, everybody gets vaccinated and, and things will go on. But the other part of us says, what if a new variant comes out? And uh, and that's what we were discussing with our, our business partner. If a new variant comes out, then there will be uh, more disaster where we won't be able to uh, open for another year or another two years. So right now we're thinking the best plan would be uh, as soon as the, uh, the rules would... Uh, would be a little bit uh, more lean where we could uh, travel inter province. We are planning to come over there and meet with a couple of contractors and see what we'd be able to do in order to renovate or which path to take. Okay. Yeah. And right now that's fairly um, fluid because there's no um, there's no timeline for when this pandemic will be over that's that's correct uh, but we, we we are we are definitely we are thinking that uh, um, within a couple of months the rules will be a little bit more um, lenient where we'd be able to travel to bc and uh, and that way we can travel and make a few appointments with the uh, local contractors on the island and uh, and bring them down there where they'd be able to suggest us either to mm -hmm. renovate or to tear down the whole thing and, and rebuild. OK, I, I I think you'd want to explore the option of tearing down and rebuilding. Um, have you actually been out to um, to the property in Sayward? Yes. OK. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Paulson. I see uh, Councillor Craig has his hand up. Councillor Craig, you have a question? Yeah, I do actually. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Mr. Lau, thanks for coming up uh, here on this um, this meeting tonight. I have a couple of questions for you. Are yeah. you the sole person listed on the title of this property, or is your business partner also listed as the on title of this business property? My business, my business partner as well. Your business partner as well. Do either you or your business partner have any other ventures, uh, corporations, companies um, aside from this one? Yes. And are either of those companies 
in the same line as this one where you've renovated ho old hotels or or uh, construction of, of, of new buildings in that sort of field? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, uh, sir, is that hotel was listed as being uh, on Riparian land. Yeah. On Riparian land. So um, tearing down and rebuild might uh, prove to be a little more difficult just because of the, the constraints of the, the water around you. Right. But thanks very much for answering my questions. No problem. Thank you, Councillor Craig. Um, uh, Mr. Lala, I, I just have, I believe, one, maybe two questions for myself. Did when you originally bought the property, did you have a written business plan in place for the uh, reactivation of it, renovation of it as, a, as to a hotel? No, but uh, we, we did not have a, a business plan in place. But we took the word of the uh, old uh, owner, Dennis is his name. Yes. So we uh, we connected with him and he uh, he gave us his business plan and, and how he wanted to run the place. So we were going off of his uh, business plan. OK, um, and at that time you, you appeared to see validity in that plan? Yes. OK, and given your your mention of covid as a restricting factor for you is there a reason that that plan would now change to a timeshare or possibly a bc housing complex yes um because so before this uh, covid pandemic um our eyes was never opened uh, to what sort of uh, um harm that uh, this kind of thing could bring to a uh, tourism industry, um, not only hotels. So I think, like, I, I don't know, I'm uh, 35 years old and uh, and I've never seen something like this where a hotel or tourism industry gets affected. But with these going along, it has kind of like opened our eyes where we, we don't, in, in line of business, you don't want this kind of damage where um, you you cannot come back and recover from uh, the revenue loss that that, that brings right, and uh, knowing that in Seywood running a hotel, we were already running thin with the seasonal um, tourism uh, coming to Seywood. So it's uh, the 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 uh, the stats which I got from Dennis the uh, the whole ca um, capacity of that hotel running at full throttle was at sixty five percent at uh, at a six months given time and uh, running that figure now even with something like this with a covert or whatever it might be whatever future might bring it's looks like it would be a loss to to run okay thank you mr lal uh, just one further question related to councillor craig's question um uh, relative to the companies or individuals that uh, you work with um, owning properties. Do you own any other properties uh, right in Sayward Village or Sayward Valley or anywhere else on the Vancouver Island currently? I don't. Okay. This is the first property that uh, that we bought on uh, Vancouver Island. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Does uh, any of the other councillors have uh, any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Lau. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Paulson, you looked like you were going to raise your hand. I was, I was. I, I would just like to to um, ask um, if you could clearly state what your request is to the to the sure. village. Sure, and uh, I don't mean any disrespect to any of the councillors or uh, or the mayor or the deputy mayor. Um, so last time I, I came uh, to the board with this appeal because uh, the uh, tax on, on this property is about 16,000 um, and most of it is uh, the utilities, either the uh, running water or the septic system. Um, for those two things, we are not using it and uh, and we think that it should be subsidized a little bit, um, not only because of this covert, but because we are not using it. And I have also mentioned uh, before uh, to the old uh, council members or or the old uh, 
person who was in charge that uh, if if they could subsidize it or or cut cut it off from the property until we decide what to do but his reply was uh, that uh, that's not how it works over there and that you are supporting the whole village kind of thing so that's why i have uh, approached today to see if anything could be done where a little bit of my expense could be lessened either on the uh, uh, the water side or the septic side but that's that's the request that we bring thank you Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Lal. Thank you for coming and uh, presenting us uh, to us through this uh, format. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And uh, hopefully uh, I've answered uh, all the questions and uh, and that we could work in future to build a better, better place in uh, in Seoul. Thank you again, thank Mr. Lal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this point, uh, CAO, is it appropriate to have further discussion or should we just move to the re uh, resolution of of uh, accepting the uh, the delegation? Well, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Tinsley, we could uh, you could move to discussion if somebody had a motion to table. Uh, we could put it to another meeting where we could prepare some options and bring it back. Um, or we could add it uh, under new business tonight. Uh, it's really how you how you wish to deal with it. Um, at, at this time, the, the only motion I can think of is to uh, have further discussion at some point and respond in some way to Mr. Lau about our position. Uh, that would be my only suggestion. Right. Um, so um, if I guess if council wants to discuss it now, um, it, you wouldn't have to disrupt the mayor's chair again. So if, okay. if council feels that there's there's three of you and you have quorum, you could uh, pass some kind of a resolution to either uh, bring it back to a further meeting or if you want to discuss and had a resolution now in terms of his specific requests. Well, you know, there are some things that we could talk about with respect to the request and the ask. So there's some benefit in talking about it right now, if if council wishes. Um, I'll I'll just take a poll here. Uh, does council feel they would like to discuss it now or move on? I am in no position to discuss this right now. Okay, uh, Councillor Paulson. I uh, I feel the same as Wes. I think we need to. Um, well, well, we do need to to discuss it, but. Um, I, I wonder if we need more information or more background from the staff and recommendations, or if we could express our own uh, opinions and how we how we see this would affect the village of Sayward. So um, it's so a motion to put it as an agenda item for discussion at a future meeting would be appropriate. Yes. Aye. OK, I'll make that motion that we put this a presentation for further discussion and uh, uh, response um, at uh, of, uh, a next meeting. Could we also uh, include in that motion um, uh, that we receive recommendations from from the staff? Ah, that's a very good idea. Sure. Yeah plus recommendations from the staff. We'll add that into the motion. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. OK, I will second that motion. OK, Councillor Craig seconds it. All in favor. Motion carried. And we're on to the return of the mayor. <laughs> Hi. Oh, good. There he is. Sorry, I was doing a weather update. There's a slight rain. Winds are from the <laughs> southeast at six. <laughs> OK, correspondence. The motion to uh, that we accept correspondence be received from A 
to see. Do I have a motion, please? I move. Second. I'll second it. Discussion. Could I? Uh, could Sorry. Could I? Oh, do we have to vote on moving? Nope. Okay. Yes. This I is just discussion. Wanted, I wanted to pull um, BC Rural and Health Network correspondence. Okay. But did we have to um, move receiving first? And we've already made that motion to receive it. Okay. That's correct. Okay. So that's okay to pull that. We'll make another resolution here that we accept um, B and C from our correspondence. Be received. Let's have a motion, please. I'll move that. I'll second, second that. Discussion? Opposed? Carried. You want to discuss um, A, the rural network? Yes, I, I read through that um, correspondence and I'm, I'm a little uh, confused about what it's intending to do because I know the uh, Comox and Comox Sayward Hospital Board um, reports to or con communicates with uh, Island Health about the um, difficulties and um, shortcomings of the rural areas and uh, I, I just I just had a question about whether this should be referred to our local uh, clinic for uh, clarification because it looks like the people that are members are our are, are local um, community um, health representatives or um, the nonprofit like Quadra Island and Cortez Island. Um, and so those those two areas are supported by the hospital board. Um, so I wonder if if uh, the Sayward Clinic should should get this information so that if if their board of directors chooses to um, deal with uh, the provincial ministry on uh, rural issues in healthcare. Thank so. you. CAO. Thank you, Chair Baker. I actually did forward this to the nursing clinic or to Tracy uh, to find out if she was familiar with the initiative. And it wasn't something she was, she called me and, and indicated she wasn't familiar with it. It wasn't something that uh, she, she had seen before. And uh, so is that, did you mean a different committee than that, Councillor Paulson, uh, through the chair? Or uh, uh, I'm not quite sure who you were referring to to, to send it to. I was referring to the um, the board of the nonprofit organization of the Sayward um, Community Health. I'm not really sure what their actual title is, but it's the the clinic board. Okay. They have meetings regularly, and okay. We'll. So, CAO, you'll send them the information. Yes, I'll, I followed up with Tracy, but I will I'll follow up with Tracy to find out who the representative is for the board and, and maybe uh, see if they can give some comments on it um, for you for the for a subsequent meeting. OK, thank you. Thank you. Do we need a resolution on that or we'd move forward? I, I think we can. It's a carry out of business. I, I you know, it's not okay. really a, a, a council. Actually, I had some things to discuss on that. Okay. Councillor Craig. Yeah, I actually read through this as well. This is an advocacy, advocacy group. Um, I know a little bit about them. I do see that there are some mayor and councils on here. Silverton, Slocan, both have mayor and councils on there. Um, oh, where else are we? There's two pages of, of, of who their memberships are. Yes, some are individuals, some are mayor and council. And, some are nonprofits like the Slocan Chamber of Commerce. The the structure and, and fees of this are very, very reasonable. It's $30 a year for an associate 
Um, I didn't see a recommended uh, recommended resolution on this, but they have specifically requested in this package uh, and included a membership structure and premium. They've specifically requested that we join their membership. So I think it's incumbent upon us to either say yes or, or, or no to that request, not just receive this for information. May I make a suggestion that we um, send it to the to the board that Councillor Wilson is recommending and we hold this off until the next meeting and then we can do a resolution at that point after having a conversation with the other board. Sure. CAO. Thank you, Chair Baker. This is just, a, a, I guess, a clarification on Councillor Craig's a comment. Um, I think we had this discussion a few weeks ago, but it's obviously maybe something we need to relook at, and that is the, how to process correspondence. Um, so the way we left it was that um, staff put all the correspondence here, and it's all received by Council. And then if Councillors want to bring forward a resolution uh, to further something uh, that's referenced in the correspondence, then they can bring that forward either at the meeting or in advance of the meeting, and I'll have it on the agenda. Or... Um, you know, uh, or the, or the, or they don't. But but I, rather than sort of bring forward every resolution, because a lot of these advocacy letters take up quite a bit of time. So if, if I took the resolution that was asked for in each of these and put it on the agenda, there'd be a lot of time spent. So I think we've left it up, and that's why it wasn't included as a resolution. So I just wanted to clear that up as a process item. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So the. What I think um, I think what we're doing here is you're going to bring it to the board, the health board. We're going to you'll have a discussion with them and then we can bring this back as a resolution on whether or not we want to do it as a municipality. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. OK, thank you. So moving on. We have uh, council reports. None. <clears throat> board of committee. Sorry, CAO. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, okay, no problem. Just didn't want to miss anything. Uh, reports of committees. None. Mayor's report is none. Unfinished business. None. Uh, staff reports under water restrictions. Before we, before we pass this over to the CAO, um, the water restrictions on odd and even days, I think on those as well, we need to add not just your flower beds or your yards, but we need to add. Sorry, somebody is. Uh, <laughs> If, if somebody could mute their mic, please. Thank you. <laughs> so what I'd like to add to that as well is cars and boats to be on opposite days, is the same days as they're watering their garden and yard. Any discussion on that? Anybody disagree with that or agree? I I don't think I understood you properly. Can you no. can you say that just one more time for me? Sure. The the resolution that we're looking at for the water restrictions, what we normally do is go to odd and even houses water on certain days. Mm -hmm. So nowhere in there does it also state regarding boats and cars in their driveway or RVs and etc. And there has been in the past um, people, you know, washing their vehicles washing their boats and so on and so forth at any given time. And if we're going to be doing water restrictions, I mean, that eats up a lot of water. So my re my recommendation is that we add cars and boats to that. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, though, I'm looking at it right here on section number four, the washing of parking lots, driveways, automobiles, boats, etc., and such activities be discouraged and if pursued only be permitted on the residents designated days before 10 a.m. and after 4 p.m. Right, to, to be discouraged. What we're saying is basically no. Oh, so what you're just so just for clarity here, what you're saying though is even if it's say an odd day and you have an odd address, if you want to wash your car, or your boat on your own day after 4 p.m., you want to exclude that in here? No, what I'm saying is 
instead of discouraging them from doing so, we're saying a hard no and only on the days that you're allowed on your odd and even days to do your lawn or your garden. I just wanted to be very clear that this is stated and it's not a, it's not something that they can just um, well, it's discouraged, but it's OK. I can still do it. OK. Sorry, Councillor Tinsley. You're muted. <laughs> you're muted, Councillor Tinsley. We can't hear anything you're saying. Sorry. Thank you. Did the hand forgot the mute? Um, the just on point four, uh, just to continue our discussion on it. Such activities, it does use the word discouraged, but then it says, and if pursued, only be permitted on the residents. So it means that they can only do it on those days. Um, perhaps your concern is that the word discouraged be removed. Correct. OK, I can see where that would cause confusion. The word discouraged is kind of soft relative to the no, you can only do it at this time. So I would just suggest that that wording be refined to uh, Washington uh, uh, can only be permitted on residents and before and take out all those other words in between that are kind of soft. I agree. Councillor Craig, does that uh, make sense? Yeah. Thank you. CAO. Thank you. Thank you. That makes sense. Um, thank you for that. Okay. So we'll give the the recommended resolution is that um, the council receives the staff report on 2021 water restrictions and the word discouraged from line four be removed and that the staff direct to implement water restrictions as outlined in the staff report effective June 15th, 2021. Do I have a motion, please? I, actually, I still have some discussion on this motion. Is this is this resolution that you proposed just about section number four, sir? Uh, no, it is not. It's regarding all of it with the added amendment on section four. All right. I still have some discussion on this on this motion um, before before this vote, please. S certainly. So what we can do is we can do it through the motion and have the discussion during the discussion period. Does that work for you, Councillor Craig? Sure. Thank you. So do I have a motion, please? I'll move that. Second. I'll second. Okay. Discussion, Councillor Craig. Yeah, I actually um, I pulled up the weather stats for the past uh, well since 2016 now. I'm looking at the background and it says these measures are recommended in response to climate change patterns that have led to increasingly dry summer, but that actually is not correct according to Weather Canada. Now I have the charts, if you can see it right there, with the corresponding printed out graphs from Weather Canada that show our precipitation in our summer months has been exceedingly wet over the past two years. In fact, 2019 was a record precipitation year with uh, June, July and August being extreme compared to 2018 and 2020. It looks like um, August had 63.9 millimeters of rain and in 2019 had 44.7 millimeters of rain and 2018 and 2017 uh, had six and eight respectively. So the norms were six and eight, but in 2019 and 20, we went from six and eight to 44 and 63. Same thing with uh, with June. Uh, the, the norms there were 32 on average. In 2020, we had 81.3 millimeters of rain. Same thing with May. And, and I'll just put these numbers there so everybody can see them. But the fact is that we've had two very wet years uh, of summers here. So, and it's going back, you can actually check the records all the way to 2020, 2010, sorry and which I've done, I've printed them all out here. And uh, I don't believe that with our precipitation here, we should even have 
a water restriction because the science or the facts here shows that we are in a wet cycle. And that's just right from Weather Canada. It's not disputable. The numbers are, are, are right there. So I am going to oppose having a water restriction based on, on our on our weather patterns here. Okay, thank you. Um, the concern not having any restrictions come into play is we have in the past uh, ran into a problem, so we can't predict the future. If, if all of a sudden we do end up with um, not a lot of rain, we have to maintain a certain amount for fire. Mm -hmm. Correct? So if we don't be proactive opposed to reactive, we could run into a situation where we don't have enough water to fight a, fight a fire. So that's where I think these water restrictions are necessary and to make sure that we do maintain a certain level to combat that issue because, I mean, fires have been a real issue for the last few years. I mean, two years ago we did have a fire. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it didn't come into the community, but we want to make sure we have the ability to fight it as far as I'm concerned. Councillor Tinsley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're muted again. I just want to say that I appreciate Councillor's stats for the past 10 years even. Uh, from a long-term perspective, the preservation of clean water supplies in any community for a purpose that is more important than some of the things here is very important, not only in summer months and also during fire seasons. It's a standard procedure and it long-term is just going to get worse. Uh, and so we need to implement exactly what we've discussed here um, and move forward on a long-term basis. Um, it, to just come back to the word discouraged, I, I would certainly support that at the end of this process or in here, that the, generally the community with a limited water supply, no matter the seasonal factors uh, over, over rain patterns, always discourages the, the, uh, the use of clean water for purposes that are not absolutely necessary such as automobiles, boats, driveways. That's my suggestion. Thank you. CAO. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Baker. I, um, I, I have to take responsibility for that word discourage. I initially, when I wrote the uh, report, I, I was really kind of surprised to see that we were allowing uh, boats and cars to be washed with expensive treated delivered water. <laughs> Uh, because, uh, you know, as you know, we we see growth as the most important um, factor for Sayward to be able to pay for infrastructure and to provide for services that people want. And uh, one of the limiting factors to growth is water, of course. And so we would want to be really careful about ensuring that it's used well. Uh, so I, I introduced that bit of uh, ambiguity there because initially I, I had recommended for council to consider disallowing any boat washing and car washing for for that reason, but obviously I you know I, I it isn't something that's been discussed. It, it's maybe something that's discussed through the OCP process, but uh, you know it is probably something that's in the future because um, yes, there might be changing weather patterns, but climate change uh, has been measured as being drier, fewer you know fewer cold days means more glacier melts and less water coming down the mountains and. Uh, uh, so there's a number of things that, uh, uh, you know, make it seem that uh, we do expect to see a water shortage that we need to look after water. So, um, but, it, you know, it's all about timing, I suppose. And uh, I think, but talking about, it might be a good thing to talk about as we move forward into the community plan. So it's a good discussion to have. And it, it's good for people to know that that washing a boat and a car in the driveway is, you know, it might, it, it may be an extinct behavior. <laughs> it might be a threatened <laughs> species because uh, it isn't sort of the sort of thing that's sustainable and most communities need to be sustainable to be able to pay for themselves. So that that's my little uh, ownership of the word discouraged. So we will, we will fix that as, as directed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one of the things with, with boats, I know, um, it's important once they come out of the water and they go back to their home to be able to rinse off that salt water out of the boat motor so you prevent the boat motor from deteriorating rapidly. So I understand that. That's why I'm only suggesting on the odd and even days, depending on your address. So, sorry, Councillor Polson, you have a comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I'm wondering about the signs that you, I often see driving through other uh, cities or towns where it says um, water restrictions is at level one or level two. And there's also a sign be, uh, close to that that outlines exactly what you can do in level two or level one. Level four, I think, is the highest. So I wonder if we could look at this and when, when it is an extra rainy season, we could have the restrictions at the lowest level or raise it if it if we have a dry spell so um, that that may mean posting a sign at at the village um, boundary and and also one in the village so people are aware of what uh, level we're at yeah I I, I agree. I think that uh, this water restriction is basically at a level one. Is that not correct, CAO? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Mayor, it really depends. This this doesn't provide for any escalation of restrictions. So so it might, and I honestly don't know what we've done in previous years. Um, it could be that we would introduce all of it together, and then it would be up to uh, we'd have a protocol in terms of how to call that. Um, I don't know if the village has developed that level of uh, protocols yet, but we can I can follow up on this for next time. OK, thank you. So is that the end of the discussion? So call for anyone opposed? I'm opposed. Okay. Councillor Craig is opposed. Jordy carries motion is carried. And for B, it's a letter of support draft for cell and internet service in Sayward. The recommended resolution is that council receive the letter of support, cell and internet service in Sayward staff report for information and discussion. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move that way. Second? I'll second it. Do we have discussion? Hearing none. Motion carried and a recommended resolution that council approves sending of four letters that are attached to May 18th, 2021 staff report. Do I have a motion, please? Um, Thank you. Second? I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? One thing that I do want to add during the discussion on this is I know that the SRD is also working very hard on attacking the connectivity issues that we are having here in the community um, because um, the numbers that TELUS has given it are, are, are not correct in terms of our upload download. They are, they're not correct and there's certain times of the day here where everybody has issues um, getting anything uploaded or downloaded onto their systems. So I'm, I'm grateful that the SRD is working hard on that. So enough of discussion. Opposed? Hearing none, carried. Let, letter to Western Forest Products regarding dust control. That council received the letter to Western Forest Products for dust control staff report for information and discussion. Do I have a motion, please? I'll move that. Second? Second. Discussion? Opposed? Hearing none carried and that council recommended resolution that council direct staff to send the attached letter do I hear a motion please i'll move that second i'll second it thank you discussion <laughs> opposed hearing none carried active transportation grant opportunity uh did you want to speak to this uh, cao before we go into the resolution 
Uh, thank you, Mayor Baker. I can speak briefly to it. This is um, a grant application that came out and it aligns nicely with our OCP. It could provide uh, the policies that basically require new developments to connect up with the walking waterfront and to consider walking as an important, uh, an act of transportation as an important element of any plan design and infrastructure. And um, and it could do some design for some of the parks that the village has inherited through subdivision. Uh, there's a little triangle out into the estuary that's surrounded by the Nature's Trust. And of course, they're not amenable to access, but we could do something like that out there, especially for people who are mobility restricted. We could do something like a raised boardwalk or something that would really give a nice little outlook for people who want to get into the estuary but but can't get in through the other trails so this does some of the planning for that and we would just add it on to the ocp work perfect thank you so the recommended resolution that council receives the active transportation grant opportunity staff report for information and discussion do i hear a motion please i'll move that second I'll second discussion Opposed? Hearing none, carried. And the second part is, rec pardon me, recommended resolution that Council support pro uh, providing overall grant management to the goal of incorporating active transportation policies and recommendations in the Village of Sayward official community plan currently under review. Do I hear a motion? I'll move that. Second? I'll second that. <laughs> Discussion? Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Number 12 is bylaws. We have none to review today. New business? There is none. 14 is public question period, which is a maximum of 15 minutes. And there was no written questions that were received today. But however, if there was, the purpose of the public question period is to permit people in the gallery to ask questions about the issues discussed by council during the meeting. Speakers will be allowed to ask one question each. If time permits, after everyone has had the opportunity to ask a question, speakers will be allowed to ask a second question. For the record, they would state their name and address. And given the meeting is being held locked electronically, pardon me, it would have to be submitted in writing advance of the meeting. In camera, on point 15, we have none. And this seems really way too early to do a um, adjournment. So I, I, I think we should go for another hour, at least. Okay, yeah. Is there anything anybody wants to bring up? Are you all good? Or no? Okay. The recommended resolution that the regular council meeting of May 18th, 2021 be adjourned. Do I have a motion? I will make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion? Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Thank you very much, everybody. You have a wonderful week. You Thank well. you. You as well. Thank you. Good night.